Welcome to the Natural State Podcast from the Arkansas Department of Parks and Tourism, an in-depth look at Arkansas's thriving tourism industry and the people who make it successful. Here's your host, Parks and Tourism Executive Director, Kane Webb. Welcome to the Natural State Podcast. Uh, today I've got a special guest host, Joe Jacobs, who is the Revenue Manager and Marketing Manager for Arkansas State Parks. And we're really excited about our guest today, uh, the immortal Seth from Seth's Bike Hacks. If you're a mountain biker, you know who this guy is. You've seen his videos. And he just flew into town, about to head to Hot Springs, and was kind enough to give us a few minutes, actually here in the airport, before he heads out. Thanks, Seth. Thank you. Yeah. Happy to be here. Well, so tell us, I know you're coming to Hot Springs. Tell us what you're, pl- what you're planning to do. What's, what's the event? So I'm just here to ride the trails and explore the place and see what it's all about. And I did something pretty similar, similar last year in uh, Bentonville. Um, and at that time, it was during an event. It was during Imbo World Summit. So there was a lot going on. This time, I get to kind of experience it. Um, with with less pandemonium, I think I'm going to be able to take my time and really explore. I'm really looking forward to that. Joe and I were just watching the um, the Bentonville oh, yeah. video again, was which was great. fantastic. Great yeah, and, and thanks for doing that for us. But you seems pleasantly surprised at what you found there. I was. I was very very much so. Um, the Bentonville. The, the main thing that surprised me about, about Bentonville. I knew that there was going to be good trails. I knew that you guys were working on the trails really hard, but I didn't know how convenient it was going to be because the way that town is set up, you have the bike shop right there where you can rent a bike and then you have the Razorback Regional Greenway, which connects everything together. And then you literally just have trail after trail right off of that. So it's, that was not something that I expected. I didn't, I've never seen a place that was that convenient to go mountain biking. Yeah, we loved it when you, you were in the the Fat Tire bike shop and said, oh, yeah. what's the deal? How do you get to the nearest car? Oh, it's just up there. You know, it's, it's just, down the street. It's down the street. So, yeah. What were your takeaways from, from that experience besides that? Um, uh, you know, I love that you thought and, and said that Arkansas is all in on mountain biking, and that was evident as soon as you, you got off the plane, basically. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's obvious that you can have a place with tons of natural beauty and mountains and hills and it not be a very good place to mountain bike. And uh, by the same token, you, ha- you can have a place that's pretty ordinary and make it a good place to mountain bike. So the, the thing that makes Bentonville and I'm hoping Hot Springs is a great place to mountain bike is that, um, you know, people proactively d- did that. You know, it's not, it's not something just happens automatically. Just because there's a mountain there doesn't mean you can mountain bike. There has to be everything that surrounds it. There has to be trails. There has to be a place to rent bikes. There has to be places that you can stay where you can bring a bike inside. Um, there's more components than just having hills and rivers and and uh, rocks. Yes. So. I, think, I think you'll really enjoy Hot Springs on that. And plus, you're going to find in Hot Springs probably a little more uh, older trails. Um, you've got a okay. mixture of old and new, so we've got some of our old cross-country trails that if you make it out to the Womble, you're going to be on trail that's been there. People have been riding it since uh, early 90s or so, and it, it was built by the CCC back in the 30s. So, oh, that's great. Um, it, it's beautiful Ridgeline Trail, still one of my favorites in the state. Broken in. Yeah, well, it's right. It's just right. <laughs> Seth, give us a little background. How did you get into mountain biking, your first ride? Where did, where did this come from, this love of mountain biking? So I don't know if I remember my first ride, but I grew up on Long Island uh, in New York, and I just always, I guess, took mountain biking for granted. I mean, every bike I've ever owned was a mountain bike, and my my dad took me mountain biking, and it wasn't even like now where people are really into it. It was just like, well, we have mountain bikes. There's a mountain bike trail. Let's go out there. So when was this, the 90s? I mean, yeah, this would have been in the 90s, early 90s. you know, I, I mean, I've ridden a two-wheeler since I was about three. Yeah. So, so your I could dad have been, was a mountain biker? Not, not really? Not really in the sense of, like, into mountain biking. It's just 
a mountain bike is the most practical bike to get because you can ride it anywhere. You can ride it on the road. You can ride it on dirt. You can ride it on rocks and stuff. So we had mountain bikes, and there were mountain bike trails near us. <laughs> you so just we put just, the two together. And it was something we loved doing. And, and I had other friends that did it, and their parents would take us. And, and it was – like I said, it was literally something I just took for granted. I mean I just, I just went mountain biking. It was – I didn't know a world without it. And as I got older, I got more involved in BMX, which, as you know, I mean, you can do that in a skate park, you can do it on dirt jumps, you can do it in the street. And that's really where I honed in all my bike skills. And then as I got older, I kind of focused back more on mountain biking and zeroed back in on it. I took everything I learned from BMX and applied it to that. Let's talk a little bit about your website, Cess Bike Hacks, which I noticed some videos had like two million views. Yeah. Uh, how, how, how long? Tell me about the evolution. First, when did you start it, and, and how long has it been going on? And, and it seems like this thing's really taken off. It's been about two years. Yeah. Um, when I started it, I didn't have any intentions of making it. You know what? It, it's my full time job now. You know, I didn't have any. I didn't have Is any, it really? It's gotten that. Oh point. yeah. 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 Um, it's, there's no way to do it with, without it being a full-time job. It's, it's too time consuming. Um, but I think maybe like six months into it, I started doing the calculations where I said, Hey, wait a minute. If I can <laughs> make the sacrifices to put all this time in for the next year and a half or, or the next year, this could approach the point where it's sustainable. And, uh, I kept setting mini goals and, and uh, of course, I became very passionate about it. Um, every time you post a video, people jump on it immediately. Yeah. They get notifications, and they're giving feedback. And it kept pushing me to do more of them. And I kept meeting my goals. And uh, eventually, I I had to kind of transition to doing it full time in order to make it work. You know, it was sort of a taking a step back to take a step forwards mm. because um, you know I had a pretty good career before I did this in kind of web development and consulting. So it, it was scary, but it was, it was at the point where I knew I, if I could commit seven days a week to it, that it could be a full-time thing. And that's, that's where it's at now. What well, does it allow you to, to ride more or less? Um, good question. I, it, that's a really good question. <laughs> I think eventually it's going to allow me to ride more. But in some ways, I, I was actually riding less because I was spending so much time behind the computer and doing my normal job, mm -hmm. running, running my company at the same time. So I was literally running out at 5 a.m., filming for a few hours, coming back at 9, and then spending the rest of the day behind the computer until 9 o'clock at night. So I've been sort of a workaholic, and I haven't been able to ride as much as people would assume I do. Um, but the move to Asheville is going to kind of change that because I'm doing this full time it's not going to be seven days a week anymore it's going to be five days a week and I'm going to do uh, the same amount of videos if not more than I've been doing so a hundred percent on it I'm going to be surrounded by trails right. and uh, yeah that's and hopefully go on more trips like this how many do you post in a week or a month or is it I'm sure it varies a average of two to three now wow average of two to three per week yeah I, I, so, I think the, the videos are really interesting. I mean, I, I'm not the mountain biking. Uh, I'm a novice, uh, <laughs> and I'm learning to, to love it. Joe loves it. He's, you guys are way beyond me. But I went on there, and I'm just kind of messing around. I, I was just fascinated by the ideas for the videos. I love the one about where you took the department store bike and took <laughs> yeah. it out. And was it your sister who wrote it or your wife? My, my sister wrote it. Yeah, on the first. novice trail, and it yeah. turned out fine. That was a great idea. I mean, yeah. if, if you, do you get your fans give you ideas? Where, where do these these ideas come from? Um, I think about this stuff all day. I mean, it's all I think about. So it's so ideas pop up, and I do write them down. And yeah, the the fans think of all sorts of things in the comments. And if I start to see people say something over and over and over again. I start to think about it more and then yeah. eventually come up with a way to make a video about it. All right, this is a question for both of you guys because you've both been right. Joe, you've been doing it for, what, 25, 30 years oh probably. You obviously, since you were a kid. Uh, it's, it's relatively new to me, and we're seeing this, especially in Arkansas, kind of explosion of mountain biking. And we're seeing it everywhere, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, why is it coming into its own now? What, what's going on? 
Um, well, I think mountain biking was always a thing for a long time, but that's from from Joe's perspective and from my perspective, it might be a little different because we've we've been in it. But if, I guess you're sort of a newcomer, an mm-hmm. outsider of the sport, and you're you're just seeing it explode now, or you're starting yeah. to see it everywhere. And um, that's that's true. It's bigger now than ever, and clearly that's because of the internet. Anything that can anything that's really cool and fun to do is becoming popular now because right. people are seeing it. Yeah, it's. I I think that uh, plus the the sport is changing a little bit from the days when we used to ride the Womble and here in Arkansas, the early days of you know, our first mountain bike trails around here were pretty much horse trails, equestrian trails or, or motorcycle trails that we would go ride. And now it's changed to purpose built trails that are designed for mountain biking. And it, and it brings in a whole new group of people that it's not just a wilderness experience where you're, you know, trying to do something on something that's not designed for it. Now there's places that you can go and and I think that's really brought the, the industry up some. I like the businesses that it's kind of thrown off. You know, the ancillary stuff. Yeah. We can always bring up craft beer, but oh, yeah. but the shops <laughs> and the different things. For someone who's not that serious about it, you can suddenly go to an area that's big in mountain biking like Bentonville and experience this the town that's kind of built on it in a way, yeah. right? I mean, we've seen it in Bentonville. You've probably seen it in other cities where it's kind of changed the culture, changed the way people live, sure. changed the quality of life. Sure. I mean, we yeah. saw, if you, you had, happened to be I mean, there. Moab is, is kind of like that, but for a lot of other things too, I think Bentonville's the only place I've been where it was like 100% mountain biking. I mean, yeah. it was like, I didn't even see uh, anything else really being advertised in terms of action sports. Yeah, but so. <laughs> yeah, then you get the culture that that uh, appeals to those of us who just want to walk around and enjoy the, the town. You do. Which is yeah. another economic development aspect of this that I really like. I yeah, well, that, that was one of the interesting things with the EMPA Summit in Bentonville. The thing I noticed was uh, we weren't in a convention center where people were going from one room to another. They were walking across downtown. And thus, the coffee shop was packed with mountain bikers. Because who and people were like, "Well, it's beautiful out here," and they were getting on their bike instead of going to another, uh, another meeting. And it was, I mean, it was just very free flowing, yeah. and 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 you could see how the the, the town just kind of picked it up and grabbed it, and it, and it really worked out well. There. Was that your first time to Arkansas? Yeah. There? Yeah. So this will obviously be your first time to Hot Springs. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. That'll yeah. be interesting to, to get your thoughts on that after you're done. So, yeah. Uh, because it's a, it's a totally different experience, I think, than, than Bentonville. It's got a very fascinating experience. Yeah. It looked, too. looked different. Yeah. 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 Well, I was wondering what, what did you know about the mountain biking scene in Arkansas before you came down, but before you even thought about coming here? So I think I researched it the way anybody would, where you go to your favorite mountain biking website, singletracks.com or mtbr.com, and just start typing in Bentonville. And uh, there was a little bit of stuff. There was trail reviews. Slaughter Pen got, got shining reviews. And uh, I saw pictures. I saw some uh, stuff from people's GoPro cameras. But none of it really did it justice. All right. I, I just expected to see some great trails. Okay, so probably something that we could do here is get a little bit more onto those kind of sites and and for sure um, talk those up a little bit more what we have and for sure. I mean, if uh, if you look at a, a tourism destination kind of like a business, the way businesses get uh, known about now is reviews. Right. You know, it, that's reviews are your your bread and butter. Right. Yeah. And on the mountain biking sites that rate the trails, that's that's where it's at. Is the word getting out about Arkansas and uh, the mountain biking community? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I read the comments and a lot of videos and stuff. Like, what's funny is I saw – it was either an, an article or a video on one of those mountain biking websites. It was like a month ago or something. And it was something in, it was something in Arkansas. It might have even been the um, – I don't know if it was the Danny McCaskill video, but it was one of one of those videos dropped, and in the comments, the top comment was like, "We knew about this like four months ago." 
That's good <laughs> so, to hear, man. So you rode an epic trail here in, in November, right? For I rode a little bit of one. Yeah. Uh, my my friend who I was with got, he ended up getting hurt, so we had to I cut saw, it short. Yeah, we saw the, I heard about the outtake to that. Yeah. Like, How's he doing? He's good. He he's, he'll be back on the trail soon. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Have you read, ridden a lot of epic trails across the country? Or? I, I haven't. Um, you know, those kind of backwoods trails where you're out all day, it's not that I, I, I love trails like that, but as a, maybe a consequence of um, my channel, I'm always looking for a place where I can haul my gear out, yeah. get a bunch of good footage, and go back. So I'm actually trying to do more of these epic trails. I think I've gotten the, the hauling the gear down to a science now, <laughs> so I'm ready to go out a little bit further yeah. and see what I can do. Are you riding so, with anyone in Hot Springs, or are you just going solo? I, I reached out to a few of my subscribers, and I'm sure I'm going to run into people at the bike shop. And uh, I, I usually go into this um, with uh, a loose plan <laughs> to leave, leave those types of things yeah. open so that I can find people to ride with. Were there particular so, trails that you're looking at? That well, I heard about Womble. Yeah. I definitely want to check that <laughs> out. Um, that's that's quite the long one, so I'd have to make a day out of it. Um, and uh, I did hear about Cedar Glades, and I've seen some pictures that I'm not really sure where they're from. So that's that's where I want to kind of get down to the bike shop and talk right. to Joe and yeah. and really find out where I should be. Yeah. The, the, the Womble is, of course, an epic. Uh, it was the first epic we had in the state. And then there's the Lovett, the Lake Washita Vista Trail, which you're going to be staying right on, I believe, at one of the resorts over there. You can ride from the resort and get on the trail. Oh, perfect. So, which is pretty cool. Um, and then uh, the other one is Iron Mountain. You, you don't want to miss Iron Mountain. It's oh, I one of the best trails in the state. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's where all the Texans come to ride because it's close to the interstate. But it's 24 miles of just beautiful... Wow! Yeah. All right. You get be honest, yeah. You're gonna go. You're gonna hit your ride with. I'm gonna try. I yeah. might try. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll be riding this weekend somewhere. Might as well be there. <laughs> Great. Seth, I gotta ask you about your little logo, your sticker. Which yeah. Is fan freaking tastic. <laughs> Thank you. You designed that. That's that's great. Um, my friend in New York, who's a he's a cartoonist, uh, Greg Farrell. Yeah. He, I reached out to him when I first started the channel, and, um. I just said, hey, can you come up with a little logo? Just make it like my face, but make it like in your style. His his um, characters always look really gritty. Yeah. So I knew sort of what it was going to look like, and it worked. It couldn't have worked out any better. Those are pretty popular. Like, I'm yeah. Have to ride with your subscribers. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I got a whole bunch of. But Kane's not fishing for one. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we did bring some state park stickers for a tray, just in case you have some money. <laughs> Uh, well, man, I hope you have a great time in Hot Springs, and uh, you obviously had a good time in Bentonville, and we love oh, your yeah. video and your site, and we're going to keep blogging that. Yeah, yeah, we can't wait to see the ones that you get uh, this week. Oh, I can't. I can't wait to dive into it. Well, thanks yeah. for your time. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Ken. Thanks, man. It's nice to meet you. All right. Have you back. Very good. Nice to meet you, man. Good to meet you, Joe. You've been listening to the Natural State Podcast with Arkansas Parks and Tourism Executive Director Kane Webb. Please stay tuned for new episodes.